Welcome to module five. And this one is our map reading module. So from um, going from what I was teaching from before with the DLS system in module four, this is now looking at all the different kinds of maps. So we have thematic maps, we have street maps, different online maps, we have old maps such as township plats, we have like engineering style maps or cadastral maps such as subdivision plans and even looking at split line notes which is a, um, a surveying application of different kinds of maps. So when you are working in industry you need to be proficient at reading these. Like you, you need to be able to look at them and know exactly what they mean. So, um, so what I am introducing in this is how do you look at these historical maps and newer maps? I don't focus a lot on the web maps in this, in, in this module. The main reason being that because with, um, with online maps, they're, they're, they're used a little bit differently and you'll be getting more into that in other classes anyways. So my first objective is the National Topographic System. So this particular PowerPoint that I'm going to go through here identifies a system of mapping that we've had in Canada for a long time. And it, it primarily focuses on, on the Canadian system. There's no other, like the, the Americans have their own systems etc. But with, with this it, we have a national one and then it bro breaks down into the different provinces and possibly and even into the territories. So the National Topographic System of Canada is published by NRCAN which is Natural Resources Canada and they publish two different kinds or two different scales of maps. So this is all topographic maps um, and there so it's really important to I identify that, <laughs> that this is scales. Um, so 1 to 20, or sorry, 1 to 250,000 is the first kind of, of, of map and then 1 to 50,000 is the other type of topographic map. It's not a thematic map or anything. So here is my 1 to 250,000 map example. It's just a really general overview of what we're seeing, what, what we have. Actually, the particular example you're looking at is still a 1 to 50,000, but the 1 to 250,000 covers the same, same area on the ground as 16 of the 1 to 50,000 maps. So it is a, a very small scale and it has a detailed view of a very large area. So we don't tend to look a lot at the 1 to 250,000 maps unless you're really trying to get a really quick overview. Um, and, but if you're looking to get something a little bit more exact, then we would um, do a look at the 1 to 50,000. So the 1 to 250,000 in the NRCAN system may have ex extended or reduced limits. And this happens at the shorelines of Canada. So if you happen to be working on hydrographic surveys, you're going to see that the this, these maps might have like extended extents or they might have reduced. And so an example here of where you're going to see extended versus reduced. So reduced would be, for example, N. So if we look at this N box here, you can see that the edges of the map kind of stop there. Okay, so N is, um, is, is, a, is a, uh, one of the maps. So we have A, B, C, D all the way up to P. This is, these are the, the 1 to 50,000 maps, but we can see for the 1 to 250, that says 43 in the center. So it's this great big square all the way around. And so it's going to have these reduced edges to it. There's no point in including these great big areas of water outside of that. And which makes sense. Like why, why would we put something there when it's just water and there's not any land? Because a topographic map is merely just showing that. So that's just taking a look at this one large square here um, and seeing that shorelines do have an, um, an impact on these maps. So the 1 to 50,000 maps, these are a lot more 
detailed, like I said. So you're going to see hills, streams, rivers, wooded areas, roads, man-made features, etc. We can use these for everything from flood assessments to like engineering designs, um, even looking at how we're going to manage crops in an area and, and even forestry. So these maps, even though they're older, they're still very, very practical. And uh, so any topographic map really that you get now that is by NRCAN, most of them are these one to 50,000 maps. So here's the system. Um, so here we have something called a quadrangle. So a quadrangle is 16 of the one to 250,000 sheets. So we have these great big squares like I was kind of mentioning before. So we have, like for example, 93. So 93 has 16 1 to 250,000 sheets. It's a quadrangle. That's the name of the map. There are no maps published that are a quadrangle. Okay, so keep that in mind that it is, if I just have a number like 93 as a cataloging number, there is no publication of that because it doesn't have a scale. We don't we don't have that. So we have to break it down into smaller numbers into these one to 250,000 sheets. So here in BC, we're looking at in, in the particular. So I have 93, the quadrangle 93. And then I go and I zoom in a little bit and I get to G. So G is the one, the 93 G is the one to 250,000 sheet. You can see me highlighting it there. That is the area of one of those map sheets or maps. So like I said, one of the one to 250,000 sheets equals 16 of the one to 50,000 sheets. So going in, so we have our 1 to 250,000. So we have the quadrangle 93, and then we have the 1 to 250,000 sheet, which is 93G. Again, the counting, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, all the way up to P. The counting system is the same across the board in Canada, where you always start, except for some, there's some exceptions, but for the most part, you can start your counting in the lower, um, the bottom right hand corner and sneak your way up to do the counting. So with the 1 to 50,000 sheets, here we have our quadrangle 93. If we go into G, we have the 1 to 250,000 sheet at G 93 G. And if I zoom in even further, I now have 93 G02. And from um, the maps that are required on the course outline, the 82J08 and 82J07, that this is where they come from. So quadrangle 93, let's review this one more time. We have quadrangle 93, the 1 to 250,000 map of 93G, and the 100, 1 to 200, or sorry, 1 to 50,000 map 93G2 or O2. So. 1 to 250,000, 93G. 1 to 50,000, 93G02, which is the actual map. So if we're looking for map sheets, we have our NTS system. So in this case, 93F, 93F goes to 12, and then we have our map sheet. So we have 93F12. And it's the same everywhere in Canada. So here we are in Alberta. We have the exact same thing as what I just showed you there with BC. And it's the same in Newfoundland. So in Newfoundland, if I wanted to get a map of Cold Springs Pond, Newfoundland, I could go to any map. Um, actually, I can even go to NRCAN and download it for free. Um, or you can go to any map um, sales place. And you will find a map of scale, so 12A01. So 12 is the quadrangle, 12A is the 1 to 250,000 map, and 01 is the map, 1 to 50,000 map sheet. Sometimes you will see it written as well as this, so 12A slash 1. So then it just kind of eliminates that 0 in there. So that slash is still, it just means that there's a representative 0 in there. So here we are, 
and we can see one is down here and we've got our map that way. So this is an easy way to order maps from anywhere in Canada. If you can find the area and you know what the quadrangle is and you know what the um, 1 to 250,000 scale is, you can generally narrow, narrow it down to the 1 to 50,000. So that is across Canada. NRCAN stops producing maps at the 1 to 50,000 line. And that was it. So each province now has something different. I'm only going to focus on Alberta and BC and then um, the territories just because uh, that's where a ma good majority of our students go back to work. <laughs> so, so we have Alberta and we're going to focus in on this one. So our map sheets right now, if we were looking at um, going into in just in, at the NRCAN maps, we have the quadrangle 82, 83, 84, and we have pieces of the quadrangle 72, 73, and 74 as well. So because we have our quadrant, and actually 85 up, up top and 75. So because our quadrangles cover these, this area, I know that if I want a map in Alberta, that's the quadrangle numbers I'm looking for. So here's quadrangle 84. So you can see it's the northern part of Alberta. We have Wood Buffalo National Park over in the northeast corner. And um, there is, of course, this is a, a very fuzzy <laughs> image. So we have Fort McMurray as well in there as, and, and so forth. So this covers that whole region. There's Peace River down here if you're looking for Peace River. Then we go down that, so that's the top. Then we go down and we have our Edmonton area, which is quadrangle 83. And so we can cover that. And we also have the um, Jasper National Park that falls in this quadrangle as well. Then in quadrangle 82, we have Calgary. So here's Calgary. And we, and the, the BC border comes in closer at this, this point, but so we, we are located here. And so that if you're looking for anything close to Calgary or Banff, because Banff National Park is all here, you can look up for in quadrangle 82. So NRCAN produces maps from for two scales, one to 250,000 and one to 50,000. That is all completed by NRCAN, okay? Where if we are looking at the anything smaller or anything different, Alberta does actually produce something different. So here we have our quadrangle and our one to 250,000 sheets, that's 83P, that is a one to 250,000. That is created by the NRCAN. So it's a federal government that produces that. So if we were to take a look and say, okay, we, we're gonna take 83A and we're gonna break it up into four quadrants. We take those four quadrants and then we break them up again into four quadrants. We end up with 16 blocks. So this is where Alberta says, okay, you know what, like, let's do something with this. So the 1 to 50,000 maps is created by NRCAN. It is not created by Alberta. Alberta does not produce maps at that scale. But what Alberta does produce, so we have the 1 to 50,000, those are produced by NRCAN. But what the Alberta does produce is something that takes it a little bit smaller. So here, for example, we have like a northeast, um, we have 83A and then 01, which is down here, and then northeast, which is the northeast corner of 01. This particular scale is, well, was produced by the Alberta government. They've quit producing it and left it to the commercial industry to do all the mapping for them now. So they're not available for us anymore. But um, we do have, an, I have a copy of an old one if you ever want to see it. So 83A01 Northeast, that is how we would write the old system of Alberta for the Alberta grid system. The unfortunate part about Alberta stopping producing these open 
pay or open maps is that there is no more coding specific to the types of maps anymore so now every company kind of goes in and does their own thing for their own area and mostly we rely on uh, the federal government for and, and our can for their 1 to 50,000 maps so if we don't put a lot of effort into mapping here in Alberta but that's okay British Columbia, on the other hand, has a much more intricate system. Alberta's pretty straightforward. We're kind of flat. You know, we got some mountains here and there, but really, we can get away with the one to fifty thousand map. We don't need a lot of detail to go with it. BC, on the other hand, is a little bit more complicated. So here, we have our the one to two hundred fifty thousand quadrangle, and then we have the one to two, or sorry, not the quadrangle and then the one to 250,000 map grid. But then they take a little bit of a sidetrack. So what they do is they actually separate it up in different ways. So we have the NRCAN system of breaking it up into the one to 50,000 map sheets. We have the BC one that takes the one to 250,000 and breaks it up into 100 pieces. So Instead, we now divide it into one, 100 pieces, and this is what we start looking like. So I'm just using this diagram here. Um, so we have 93P028. So you can see that now, instead of saying 93P10 or 02, so if it said 93P02, we're looking at a 1 to 50,000 map. But as soon as we have three digits, we know that it has been split up into 100 pieces. So now instead of having a 1 to 50,000 map, we have a 1 to 20,000 map. So I go from 1 to 250,000, and now it becomes 1 to 20,000. Okay. Then, but that's not good enough. 1 to 20,000 is not good enough, because even Alberta had that at one point. That's not good enough. BC's like, hey, we need to be more accurate. So that's fine. And we have to have like more detail in our maps. So that's fine. So what they did is was they take this 1 to 20,000 map and then they break it up into 100 pieces. So now I have a 1 to 2,000 scale. So I have 93P028068. Okay. So if I look, if I wanted this particular location and I'm like, I need a 1 to 2,000 scale, this is the cataloging um, number I would use. But that's not good enough for BC. BC is really going to show up Alberta. <laughs> so, so they take that and they're like, no, we need it more accurate. We need, we need to be able to zoom in more. So what they do is they take this and they divide it into four. So now I go from one to one or one to 2000 scale. And now I'm at a one to 1000 scale. And we can see what they do here is just include one digit at the end. Okay, so I have a 93P0280683. And again, not good enough. So we have some maps, especially in the city areas and more like urban areas, they produce one to 500 scale. So to represent that, it's 93P0280632. So that is their first method of breaking it up. Because again, <laughs> it's not good enough just to have one method in BC. Alberta's like, Forget it, I'm not doing anything. BC's like, I am making maps and they are going to be the best maps in, in all of Canada. <laughs> so, so here's method two. So we take our 1 to 20,000 map, right? We took our 1 to 250,000 map, which was 93P, and we divided it into 100. So that is a 1 to 20,000. Then we're going to take that and the, they, they take this one and they divide it into four. Easy. Now it's a 1 to 10,000 map. So it's written as 93P0283. Then they take that and they say, huh, we got to divide that more. We need, we need more detail. So they divide it into four again, making a very simple math, one to 5,000 scale for that one. So now we have 93P0283 Then they say, no, I got to get closer in. I got to zoom in more. So then they've created they divide it by four again and they get a one to 2500 map. So now I have 93P028324. Then 
If that's not good enough for you, you can go to a 1 to 1,250 scale map. And that is 93P028-3241. So to give you a way to remember this for exams or for anything that you might find to be helpful, you can, there, there's a simple way of remembering the math on this. I'm just going to pull it out a pen here. So with the BC system, change this to black. With the BC system, you have a, we start with 1 to 250,000, right? So this is the NRCAN. And then what BC does is they take it and they make it into 1 to 20,000. This is dividing it into 100 pieces, okay? So you can see that there's a, a little bit of a pattern, well, not a pattern, but a little bit of a representation here. Now, NRCAN's paper size is different than the BC paper size. So if we draw, if we look at this, if we divide by 100, we're actually dropping a zero off of the scale. Then when I do the next one, so for method one, I have two that I divide by 100, right? So this next one, becomes 2,000. And then when they start dividing it by 4, all that what they're doing is dividing the scale by 2, right? And then we do it again and we divide it by 2. So when the quadrants, when I, this is the number of quadrants, Okay, so if it is divided by 100, it's 100, drop uh, not the, maybe I'll get an eraser. Drop one zero from the scale number, right? So you can see that this one's a little bit different because I'm switching between two systems, but it's very close, right? But here, if I go divide by 100, I drop a zero. If it is divided by four, divide the scale number by 2. Okay, so again, so it's this 2000 becomes 1000, and then 1000 becomes 500. So that's for method 1. For method 2, it's the same thing. We have the 1 to 250,000 from NRCAM. Method 1. This is method 2. So we take the one, and then it becomes 1 to 20,000, because BC likes to start that way. Then we go to, we divide it by 4. This is divide by 100. Divide by 4. It's 10,000. And then we divide it by 4 again, and we get 5,000. Then we divide by 4 and we get 2,500. And then we divide by 4 one more time, and we get 1, 2, 5, 0, right? So you can see, again, the same pattern. All this is 4, so it's all divided by 2 all the way down. So that's how the BC system works. It's, um, it follows the same method as we go through, and it is a really straightforward method to go with. Okay, I'm just not going to go through this again. This new system of like presenter is is different from what I'm used to. Okay, we're almost at BC. 
<laughs> one of these long things. All right, so the last one is the Northwest Territories. So the here's in the Northwest Territories. Now we're getting into the territories themselves. Why do we care about that? Because it is slightly different and it is federal. So um, if you end up working in any mining situation there, then uh, you can continue to work with that. So the NTS system is a little bit different. The reason being, and just ignore the labelings on here because it really doesn't, it, it make, changes things up. But this looks very different. The Arctic looks very different than the rest of Canada. So the, and because the federal government is the one that looks after the territories, uh, their, their mapping system is a little bit different. Now don't get too hung up on what I'm going to be talking about here. Don't memorize numbers. I just want you to get the general concept as to what's going on. So we have a lot of water in these areas, right? We have gaps all the way through. We have strange things happening with the different um, the different 1 to 20,000 maps. We have ones that are extended out. They've got bubbles. Some of them are shorter and smaller. Like there's all kinds of stuff going on in here. So because of that, we need to catalog the system a little bit different. So as we go through, we have we actually separate up the the what we call the federal permit system into different sections. So the federal permit system is used in the territories, and, and, and the federal government looks after it. And so we have the 60th um, parallel, 60 degrees north latitude. And then it goes up, the first section goes all the way up to 68 degrees north. And then we have another section, which is only two degrees, that's different. And then another section that goes up to 75, and then another one that goes to 78, and then back up to 85. The main reason why these are so different is because we have convergence of our, of these boxes, right? So if we want to keep a 1 to 20,000 map, it's actually going to keep, keep getting like smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, trying to cover that and the piece of paper is eventually going to end up tiny. So we try, we separate them up differently depending on where we're at. It also depends on how much land we have. And so if there's a lot of land and a lot of like population, with, relatively speaking, then there's going to be like a higher and more, um, higher information or, what am I looking for? Smaller scales, or sorry, larger scale. There we go. I'm going to get all everything all confused here. There's going to be a larger scale that we're trying to achieve in those more populated areas versus ones that are not so populated. But we also don't need high resolution or anything like that in water because there's really not much there. And things do change so quickly up in the Arctic. When I was working up in the Mackenzie Delta, that I had a satellite image from like three years before and then I was looking at my satellite images like the entire delta was different. All the rivers had moved around and everything so it really does make an impact on um, because everything just changes so rapidly up there the permafrost and everything so it's pretty incredible. So uh, I'm going to leave that there for the NTS system and that is covers that objective so objectives five um, by up to 5.2 and so we will uh, move on to the objective 5.3 in the next video.